Hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. This is Straight Facts Commentary where I give you my unpopular opinions in everything pop culture. So please, please, please stick around and subscribe for more. And to the rest of you, to the rest of you, the non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters, you guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Honestly, if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? You guys... That's what I thought. No, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. That's what I... Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Drake, for that humble intro. I appreciate it. Maybe something just whoosh, completely goes over your head, bitch. And that's, that's totally fine. But we're going to speak about it. We're going to speak about it. We're going to give many examples and we're going to have a conversation. If you're willing to have a conversation rationally with me about it in the comments, we can do that. If not, you're going to get blocked. So just keep that in mind. We're not going to have a bunch of airheads in the comments just spewing rhetoric that is just completely like dismissive and defensive of these types of behaviors. We're not going to sit up here and do that. Not on my channel. You will get blocked. Okay. One of the first things first I want to get straight is Chris is a legend to me. He has timeless music. He's given me all the feels over the years. He's had the impact on this music industry like it cannot be denied. His impact cannot be denied. His influence cannot be denied. The music that he's made over the years is just, I, I love it. I love all of it. I grew up listening to Chris Brown from a very young age, okay? This has nothing to do with his artistry and everything to do with how he's acted and made black women feel who have supported him throughout his career, okay? Amongst the myriads of other things that he's done outside of colorism, but we'll touch on that a little too. When Chris Brown was young and on the come up, young black women were the primary consumers of Chris Brown's music and the primary supporters of his music and still are to this day. A lot of, a lot of his target audience is and was black women. Of course, now Chris Brown has amassed a huge fan base and has garnered tons of support across all communities and across all races but in the beginning of his career that was really mostly the primary he made love songs that you know as a teenager catered to young black girls who came across him and so naturally black women and girls grew to love him which makes sense he was very charming and very handsome and as he got older he only got more charming and more handsome as he started to get bigger and more successful and had a whole bunch of hits a lot of black women started to pick up over the years that Chris Brown did not feature a lot of black women, black, dark to brown skin women in his music videos. Um, and a lot of people and women who are black who have supported Chris Brown started to feel like, hmm, they just started to notice it, just started to pick up on it that he didn't seem to highlight them or show them. And that's really honestly not just Chris Brown. That is a lot of black male artists in this industry whether it's r&b or whether it's hip-hop well mostly hip-hop to be honest a lot of rappers do not feature black women in their music videos even though rap is targeted towards or supposed to be for um black people but yet we're nowhere to be seen in a lot of these music videos and i can already hear somebody in the comments well that doesn't necessarily mean anything that's literally just one thing one tiny thing amongst the other things that Chris Brown has done that's going to solidify this whole point. Let's get into some more harder evidence of Chris Brown and his obvious colorism and texturism when it comes to black women. <clears throat> and so I read, I'll need to leave a paper trail. Then I'm gonna need a tip drill. Shaking it, turn the lights down. Bust it for the light bill. Digging it, then I'm licking all on that pooty cat. Put it right there. Only want to fuck the black bitches with the nice hair. Okay, so as you can see, those are lyrics from his song uh, about six years ago called Need a Stack. Okay, and in this song, he's referring to black bitches with the nice hair. And some of you who don't know or don't care are going to say, well, what's wrong with that? He's saying he's only going to have sex with girls or black women who have nice hair. No, that's not what he means. In the black community, good hair or nice hair is in connotation to it being a looser texture of curls or hair that's easier to manage, run through, look at, 
whatever you want to call it, it's used to describe a hair texture that isn't 4C, that's more like looser curls. Let me insert a picture or two to, you know, for reference. In this photo, we have a black woman with 4C hair, which would be just described as tighter curls. Um, it's not a loose body texture or anything like that. It's really tighter to the head, tighter to the scalp type curls, but when you pull it, there is length there. It's just a tighter curl pattern. And then here, we have a looser curl texture pattern. Um, it is just a looser pattern of hair. It's probably like 4A or something like that. Don't quote me, but it's like probably like 4A, something like that. So it's looser hair. And this is the good type of hair that he's referring to as a black woman. Just having a looser curl pattern and easier hair or nicer hair, quote unquote, which is highly offensive to black women and the average black woman who doesn't have a loose curl pattern of hair like myself. I have 4C hair. So he's basically saying only black girls who have nice hair because that other hair isn't nice. It's, it's not good. So a lot of black women were completely turned off by this lyric because it was unnecessary and we knew exactly what he was alluding to. This article from Wrap Up highlights some fans' reactions to the statements that were made in the song and this person says, So I've been a Chris Brown fan for at least half of my life. In his recent song from his album, Need a Stack, he said I only fuck black bitches with the nice hair and I just wanted to know what is nice hair. The idea of good hair is just another way of reinforcing colorism in the black communities because we all know good hair is a curly hair, loose curls that is usually associated with mixed race black girls, but we're all used to it by now. Then, 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 what does Chris Brown do once he sees everybody speaking about this topic? He goes off on Instagram instead of apologizing to the fans. He said, y'all trippin' trippin'. Y'all bitches don't wanna F that nigga with the fucked up teeth, do you? He commented on his Instagram fan page. Only bitches upset is the uglies, not the black queens, he added. <sighs> so, Chris Brown has a habit of doing that too. If somebody calls him out for something or says something, he'll just go on Instagram live spazzing and being belligerent and dismissive. He knows exactly what he meant. He knows exactly what he's doing. Chris Brown isn't stupid. He's colorist. Also, the whole situation happened with Tokyo Vanity, who is a rapper, okay? And she ended up calling him out for not allowing black women into his sections in the club. And this is something that he did on a regular basis because she knows people who were her friends who it had happened to. So let's go ahead and play that clip. Christopher Pazza Head Brown. Bitch, stop playing with me. Okay, all that talking about, can you take me out and all that? Like, bitch, that shit not funny. Second of all, bitch, I'm not even your type, bitch. You into things of, you know, lighter complexion. You know, coke, heroin, molly, acid, embalming fluid, Tokyo. cigarettes. I'm just saying, Puerto Rican women, white women, Asian women. You know, and that's all fine because that's your preference and we are entitled to a preference. Bitch, all I'm doing is calling it like I see it. When we was in the club in Miami and when we was in the club in L.A., bitch, in your section, your rules was no darkies. You wouldn't let my homegirl in in L.A., but you let all her friends in. And in Miami, you wouldn't let my other homegirl in, but you let all her friends in. But y'all was talking about no dark skin women. All I'm saying is like a gangster, how you feel stand on that shit because me however i feel about anything i'ma stand on it ten toes bitch don't come changing your opinion and how you feel about shit because everybody bashing you and furthermore i told my homegirl not to even be in your station because bitch she don't even do coco Chris all right so that's what tokyo tony had to say um i don't think tokyo tony would lie about this we know that chris brown has a history of colorism so this is not surprising we've heard about this for years this is nothing new and apparently this isn't just a chris brown thing this happens in clubs across the united states this is not just a chris brown thing i think this is an industry thing and i think this is something that happens in general too where there are certain aesthetics that are held for clubs and there are some clubs that do not allow black women in like just aesthetic wise they want to maintain a certain look and a certain image and black women don't fit that aesthetic um there's a video like i forget 
how long ago it was like a year or so ago where um there were like black women outside of a club that cardi b was going to and the bouncers or the people in the front were not letting those women in the club and they were telling cardi b to tell the bouncers to let them in however not to take it away from chris brown because they didn't say that black women weren't allowed in the club they said in this situation that black women were not allowed in chris brown's section meaning his part of the club where his people are and where he's partying at not the club period the section that he was in so he was dictating that particular section okay you know what's crazy if i went with a group of my homegirls and me as a black woman wasn't allowed in chris brown's section and my homegirls went in the section oh those girls aren't my friends i would have just been like a word okay don't ever talk to me again because how are you just gonna leave me and then where am i supposed to go just go wander outside of on the streets or walk around the club by myself oh i hope she ditched i hope whoever that happened to they ditched those people because that's effed up also flash forward to a couple of years after the situation the landscape had started to change and you know i think chris brown could start to see that the voices are getting louder when it comes to the whole colorism topic and the emergence of like afro beats music and black women being praised and women like tims and all of this stuff was starting to come about just like praise amongst black women a lot of fans believe that he started to try to pander towards black women most recently um when he had a music video with normani as the model who is featured in the video i'll just play a small clip of it so here is the clip of the video um i can't play the music because it will get copyrighted and i just don't have time for that but yeah here he is dancing with her and then also another video that he did have for uh the song under the influence that entire video featured a darker skin black woman with a short haircut and that is not something typically that chris brown would even do but the times are changing and therefore he started pandering he's never done anything like this before in his entire career which is really sad to say and a lot of people in the comments of the blogs at the time when these videos were being released were like oh my gosh yes dark skin queen a dark skin queen is with chris brown i'm like y'all are praising this ew ew and the reason why it's ill is because it's obviously like they were so starved to see Chris Brown with a dark-skinned woman or a brown-skinned woman for once in a video that they were like so happy and excited and like, oh my gosh, finally a dark-skinned queen with Chris Brown. It's like, oh my God, it's clear he doesn't like us. It's clear he does not like us. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, they just got so excited to see it because they don't ever see it. And I know somebody in this video is going to probably say, oh my gosh it's just a preference why are you being weird no it's not just a preference it's a preference but when you're a black person and you are saying i don't like another black person because they are a few shades darker than you that's a problem it's a huge problem and it's an indicator of self-hate self-hatred towards blackness because you as a black person shouldn't be saying well i don't want to be with this black person or don't want to acknowledge a black woman because of the shade of her skin as a black person as a black person that's crazy i mean it's crazy if you're white and you're doing that but it's even crazier as a black person doing that chloe bailey even recently received some backlash due to working with him on one of her tracks for her album okay because people were like why would you work with this colorist why would you work with chris brown because he's been abusive in the past and his restraining orders and da 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 me personally i didn't really care about the chris brown feature but just using it as reference and people still care it's still something that's a sore spot chloe decided not to address this she literally didn't say anything about it and there was a lot of backlash for like a long time about it as much as chris brown is a pillar in the music industry and he has got me through my entire childhood and teen years and he still makes bops to this day i can't support him like i don't go to his concerts i don't go to his shows i don't because i just don't feel comfortable i don't feel comfortable sitting up there in the audience knowing more than likely he don't even f with me <laughs> 
he don't f with black women like that he don't and it's not to say he has to he doesn't have to do anything but it just feels uncomfortable to me knowing that you feel some type of way about brown and dark skinned women that makes me feel uncomfortable knowing that you don't really care for us like that i'm not saying you have to love us and kiss our feet or something it's just feels uncomfortable when you purposely push us aside or purposely say and do things to disparage us and some people say with the whole abuse thing that it's like oh that happened so many years ago why do people still care um me personally i don't have any personal stakes in it but i understand why people still care okay i can't sit up here and tell somebody else oh you shouldn't care about this when it's something as large as abuse when it's something as large as colorism you can't tell people not to care even if you personally don't care even if you personally are over it whether you personally feel like it's not that big of a deal you have every right to feel that way as a fan of chris brown you have every right to be like i don't care about all of the extra shit. i don't care about the semantics well the people who do when it comes to large things like that, it is really just evil and awful to tell them that their feelings about that shouldn't matter or that it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you want to actively support Chris Brown knowing all that, then go right ahead. You can do that. But the people who don't want to do that don't need to do that. And I'm a commentary channel, so I talk about whatever topics I feel like talking about. And I like talking about colorism and getting people up to speed on it, especially if they don't know about it. But anyway, I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.